Many years ago, Steve G4RAW described what he called a 10-minute transmitter. It appears in Sprat Edition 82. The transmitter was so called because it took just 10 minutes to build. And within 15 minutes of having started it, he made a contact. This is my own version. It uses a BD-139, which you can see on the right. On the left is a low-pass filter. At the bottom left is an IRF-510. Not used in this circuit, but it will be used later on. I've also added a variable capacitor in series with the crystal to provide some frequency agility and a switch so I can switch between two crystals. In this case I've got one crystal for 7015 and two crystals in parallel on 7023. The benefit of the parallel crystals is to give greater pulling range with the variable capacitor. Here is my circuit of it. Note the one nanofarad coupling capacitor between the collector of the BD139 and the Pi Network low pass filter. I've used a fixed capacitor, though you may find that if the note is poor with one nanofarad, you should substitute a lower value of capacitance. Steve used a one nanofarad compression trimmer to achieve optimization, but they are quite rare components now. Connected to an RF output meter, I get just over 200 milliwatts output. As you can hear, there's a bit of chirp, so I probably should have used a lower value than the 1000 picofarad used for the coupling capacitor between the collector of the BD139 and the Pi Network. I've got an antenna connected. I'm now using the Kiwi SDR at Ironstone Ridge in South Australia. It's around 700 kilometre distance and it's just before noon local time here in Melbourne. Let's see if the 200 milliwatts is enough to make it across to the remote receiver. As you heard, it was quite audible. Though note that amateurs in suburbia would likely have a hard time receiving the signal. I've now added an IRF 510 RF power amplifier. That will provide significantly more output. And there'll be some extra isolation between the oscillator and the antenna. So they may be a better quality note. This is the circuit. It's a very simple IRF 510 circuit and you'll notice that unlike voice transmitters there's no DC bias. No voltage regulator diode, potentiometer or whatever. That can be a problem because when you apply too much voltage on the IRF 510 you can easily blow it up. Um, there's no need for that circuit here so I've left it out. That does, however, probably require a higher drive than would be the case if you had that circuitry in. In the drain part of the IRF 510, 10 turns of wire by filer round. I've done a previous video on winding toroids. It's a broadband transformer. And then that connects to the Pi network. I didn't mention before, but the one microhenry used in the low pass filter is 14 turns, I think it's 14 turns on a T50-2. So that's the circuit. A few more parts, but hopefully a lot more power. Let's see how much and then put it on the air. As you can see, 
a very impressive 7 or 8 watts. A small amount of chirp, but not really objectionable. Back on the same SDR we were using before, and only a few minutes later. So, radio conditions should be fairly similar. A thousand picofarad is fairly tight coupling between the crystal oscillator and the final amplifier stage and that could potentially cause chirp or loading on the crystal oscillator so I've put a 220 picofarad capacitor in just to try looser coupling. Now the problem with that is that much less RF is getting through and the output power is only about 2 watts. So instead I've put in a 470 picofarad and the output is a healthy 6 watts. That was quite a long key down, just touching the transistors, only slightly warm despite the lack of a heat sink on the BD139 and similar for the IRF510. So, all I need to do is to neaten up the circuitry. Here is a tidied up version of the transmitter. The crystal oscillator has been rebuilt with shorter leads and in particular the leads of the decoupling capacitor um, both at the power supply rail and also at the key connection are no more than 10 millimeters long on each side so a lot shorter than it was and same with the leads carrying RF quite a bit shorter the thing you need to be aware about this oscillator circuit is that it is fairly powerful and there's likely to be high currents going through the crystal that may make it more prone to chirp and not so good for pulling its frequency. If you want the ultimate instability with crystal oscillators, it's better to have a low crystal current and demand less output from the oscillator. Since the aim is to make this a simple transmitter with two devices only, what I'll do is instead of connecting the emitter straight to ground when I key, I'll lessen the current through the transistor with a resistor in the emitter line, just between the emitter and the key, which is then shorted to ground when the oscillator is keyed. I've now installed a 15 ohm resistor and also added an extra parallel capacitor across the key, around 100 nanofarad. Should provide a little bit of extra shaping for the CW waveform and reduce clicks.